Hello there, I'm Mr. Eli Mack, and this is a show where I fantasy book a storyline in wrestling that I think would be cool to see, whether it be the past, the present, or the future. And before I start, this is being filmed directly after WrestleMania 38, and it is, and it is being inspired by a rumor that was going around in early March that originated from Dave Meltzer. If a new world title isn't introduced, don't get mad at me, please. I'm just creating a story that I think would be cool. And before I start, please give this video a like. It really helps get this video out so more people are able to watch it. And maybe it may get Adam Blompier to watch it as well. So I can possibly appear on Fantasy Booking Warfare. That's my nephew knocking on the door with a toy. Now, let's Get into the booking. Now, as we all saw, Roman Reigns defeated Brock Lesnar, unifying the WWE Championship and the WWE Universal Championship. However, according to Davey Boy Meltzer, a new world title is going to be introduced on Raw, a la Raw 2002, when Eric Bischoff debuted the World Heavyweight Championship and gave it to Triple H. Now, I have no plans on doing something like that exactly, but I do have an idea on who to crown as the new Raw World Champion. To start, we are at the Raw After Mania. After a big, big, spectacular event that is the Raw After Mania, Adam Pearce comes out and starts talking to the crowd because he is the on-screen authority figure. I could have had Vince do it, but after everything that he did with Pat McAfee and that botched stunner cell i prefer to have adam pierce do the talking on camera he congratulates roman reigns for defending his title and for unifying the titles as well he then mentions how he had a conversation with roman at wrestlemania after the match and says that roman has refused to appear on both raw and smackdown Adam Pierce later states that Roman is proclaiming himself as the tribal chief of the WWE and only wants to carry his title on the brand that has the most eyes. And since SmackDown is on Fox, Roman chose SmackDown. Look, I know that's probably a very flimsy excuse on why we want to put Roman on SmackDown exclusively, but it was the only one I could think of and we needed some reason to only have him on SmackDown. And because of this, Adam Pierce has spoken with Mr. McMahon after he regained consciousness from that very botched Stone Cold Stunner cell job. And a new world title will be debuting on Raw. And to, to determine who will be fighting for the title, Adam Pierce announces that there will be an eight man tournament. The final two competitors will face off against each other at WrestleMania Backlash for the title. Pierce says that he has also spoken with Mr. McMahon, and the eight men have been chosen. And those eight competitors in the tie in the tournament will be AJ Styles, Kevin Owens, Seth Rollins, Damian Priest, Randy Orton, Riddle, Edge, and Cody Rhodes. He says that everyone should be getting ready because the tournament starts next week. And that's how we end the Raw After Mania. And now we're at the next Raw event, and we are beginning this tournament. The first match on the card of Raw is Kevin Owens versus AJ Styles. Now, of course, these two can have a great match, and that's what they do. They have a great match. But Edge and Damian Priest, because they teamed up together and now probably starting a new brood faction, who knows? Edge and Damian Priest come out and cost AJ the match, allowing Kevin Owens to advance into the semifinals of the tournament. And now the next match on the card and the next match in the tournament is Randy Orton versus Seth Rollins. This is a very close match, but a lot of interference from other tag teams like Alpha Academy and Street Profits and all that craziness allow Seth Rollins to pick up the victory. Seth Rollins is advancing into the tournament. Now, throughout the Raw event, we have backstage segments and other matches are happening, but we're only focused on the tournament at hand. And the next match in the tournament is Riddle versus Edge. Now, to me, this is a bit of a dream match because I don't think we've had this one-on-one -on -one before. I, I may have been mistaken because I don't watch Raw on a regular basis because who wants to watch a three-hour show on a regular basis? Anyway, moving on. Though... 
Edge seems like he's having the upper hand, AJ Styles is able to come out and get revenge, costing Edge the match, with Riddle advancing to face Seth Rollins in the semifinals. Ooh. And then we get to the main event of Raw, Damian Priest versus Cody Rhodes. Damian has a great showing in the match. People are thinking he may win, but unfortunately for him, Cody Rhodes is able to pick up the victory, advancing to face Kevin Owens, and that's how we end that Monday Night Raw. Going on to the next Raw, we have Cody Rhodes versus Kevin Owens, and these two have a fantastic match, lasting nearly 20 minutes if... Vince McMahon is willing to give him that amount of time. And in the end, Cody Rhodes is able to pick up the victory, advancing to the title match at WrestleMania Backlash. And then we have other little segments in between that, but we get to the main event, which is Riddle versus Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. The two have a 20-minute match as well, but unfortunately for Riddle, Seth Rollins picks up the victory and it is going to be a rematch from WrestleMania Night 1. Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins for the Raw World Heavyweight Championship. Now, after the victory, Cody Rhodes comes out and he just stares down Seth Rollins. And they both just keep eye contact. And that is how that Raw ends. Now we're moving on to the next week of Raw. And it is not a... About to beat each other down. No, we are doing the contract signing before the go-home show. And on the table is a covered-up world title. We don't know what it looks like. We're not revealing what it looks like yet. But Seth and Cody sit across from each other on the table. And they both agree not to get physical during the contract signing. The reason why is because I want to subvert expectations. I don't want anyone to be put through a table at the contract signing. We haven't had a go-home show yet. But before they... Before they start signing the contract, Seth mentions that he wasn't prepared for Cody at WrestleMania, that his loss against Cody was a fluke, and at WrestleMania Backlash, he is ready to face Cody. He's ready to beat the deserter. When Cody left, it just helped Seth rise to the top, and Seth signs the contract, slides it over to Cody. And Cody, he just smiles and looks up at Seth. Cody mentions that Seth has been stuck in a rut, always going back to the same bag of tricks when he runs into a wall. Cody mentions that he left to find himself, and he did just that. Now, he's going to do the one thing that his dad never did. He's going to win a world title in the WWE. And he signs the contract and hands it over to Adam Pearce. Seth extends his hand, and Cody shakes it, but the two keep their eyes locked on each other wanting to throw a punch. But again, they both agreed to keep it civil, and that's the segment. It's not a main event segment, but it is a segment to get people ready for the match. And now we're on the Go Home Raw episode, and out comes Adam Pearce. He's walking out with the title in hand, still covered up, and he looks at the crowd and places the title on a stand. You know, one of those stands where you go, there's the title. And he mentions that it is time to reveal the new Raw World Championship. He removes the cloth, and it's the big gold belt. The good old World Heavyweight Championship. And that's why I sort of mentioned that earlier. If you didn't pick that up, you probably did. But anyway, it's the big gold belt. And with the reveal, Seth Rollins walks out first, and he looks at the belt. He chuckles. And then Cody's music hits, and he walks down looks at the title his father used to carry. And Seth and Cody, at this point, they have a promo off. Seth mentions that Cody can never reach the heights that his father did. Seth even mentions that at the end of the day, Dusty only cared about one person in WWE, and that's Seth freaking Rollins. But Cody, when he hears this, he doesn't take it as an offense. In fact, Cody chuckles and tells Seth that he's a joke. Seth is just the shell of a man that was worthy of a championship. Now he's just a man that hides behind expensive ring gear. He's all talk and no substance. Cody mentions that he's going to do to Seth at Backlash the exact same thing that he did at WrestleMania. Seth chuckles and goes to attack Cody, but Cody's able to block the punch and starts attacking. However, Seth is able to reverse the situation and gets the upper hand and beats down Cody with Seth standing tall. Now, 
it's time for WrestleMania Backlash. Now, this match isn't the main event because neither of these guys is named Roman Reigns. So, Roman Reigns is obviously going to defend his championship and it's going to be the main event of the match. But this is going to be somewhere in the middle of the card because you want to be able to get people hyped up in the middle of the card. And these two have a fantastic match with many near falls. It's like, oh, one, two, three. Oh, no. One, two, three. No. Oh, my goodness. Curb stomp. One, two. No, only two. My God, this is amazing. But then ultimately in the end, Cody Rhodes is able to hit the crossroads and get the one, two, three. Your winner and new world heavyweight champion, Cody Rhodes. Now, I know what you're thinking. I really do. Why are you pushing Cody this early? Why do you want why don't you wait for SummerSlam? He shouldn't be booked as a world champion this soon. Or he shouldn't even be world champion at all. Well, here's why. I just honestly, I just want to get this this push out of the way early. Look, he's going to get the main event push. He wouldn't be back in WWE if they didn't have a plan for him. But I honestly wanted to give him the world championship early. That way we can build to Cody versus Seth for the world championship again. But this time it's SummerSlam. Another reason is that Roman is going to be the heel champion on SmackDown. And in my opinion, Raw needs to have the babyface champion. And after the reaction he got at WrestleMania, there is no way he's going to be a heel. Position him as the top babyface in Raw and treat him on the level, or maybe a few steps below, treat him on the same level as Roman Reigns. But yeah, that's just that's just my idea. You build up Cody early on, you give him the title early on, and then at SummerSlam, have Seth take the belt off of Cody. Because honestly, you give the belt to Cody early, then you don't have to worry about having to worry about pushing him to get the title to SummerSlam. No, he has the belt. He is the babyface champion all the way to SummerSlam. And then you can have Seth take the belt off of him in the stadium, in Nissan Stadium. Because in my opinion, I think nothing against Cody. Seth is a bigger name, and you want the bigger name to carry the belt or to win the belt in the big stadium event. But that's just my fantasy booking of crowning the new Raw World Champion. What are your thoughts on the idea? Do you like Cody being the first champion? Would you prefer someone else? Whatever your thoughts, post them in the comments down below, please. And don't forget to hit the like button. Get this video out there for people to see, like Adam Blompier. I want Adam Blompier to watch this video. I want WrestleTalk to watch this video. I want to be on Fantasy Booking Warfare someday because I think I can compete. But that is just my opinion. Again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you for the next one. Till then, hope you all have a great rest of the day. And that's my cat.